All right, I thought I already had some existing notes for this, but don't really need them. Please get your authorized version of the scriptures and please read along with me at the scripture we're going to be looking at and the things we're going to be considering. This is going to be a very quick video. It doesn't need to be this long, um, meticulous video to prove this to you. We're going to be addressing quickly what is communion and what does it serve, okay? Roman Catholicism tells you that Mass, communion, is salvific, meaning pertinent to salvation. Catholic, how do you receive Christ? Hmm? Do you receive Christ as it says in Ephesians chapter 1? Huh? Do you? Because a Catholic, remember, a Catholic doesn't know if they're going to heaven when they die. Because that's the sin of presumption. Okay? But in Ephesians chapter 1, Ephesians chapter 1, verses 12 and uh, 12 on to verse 14. That we should be the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ, in whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed, eternally secure, once saved, always saved, with that Holy capital S Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. The redemption of the purchased possession, the catching away of the body of Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? Erroneously referred to as the pre-tribulation rapture. Okay? Redemption of the purchased possession. But sealed with that holy capital S spirit of promise, the Lord himself. You receive the Lord when you come to him on his terms and he saves you. He seals you with himself. That's how you receive the Lord. Okay? A Catholic receives the Lord by eating him. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> okay? It's, it's, it's nonsense. It's crazy. Okay? It's crazy. And through magic, with a K, the Jesuit priest does the abracadabra, hocus pocus, and turns the round cookie into the flesh of Jesus and the wine into blood. Uh, witchcraft. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But Catholicism tells you that mass... Communion is salvific. And they are taught that they receive Christ that way. And they twist the, you know, like, you need to eat my flesh and drink my blood. That's somewhere on the channel. We don't need to get into that. We don't. What is communion, though? Well, what is communion? 1 Corinthians chapter 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Oh, verses 17, we're going to read verses 17 on to the close of the chapter, okay? All right? And the whole thing about what the Lord said about, you know, eat my flesh and drink my blood, and in that context, he also says, the flesh profiteth nothing, okay? Okay, he wasn't talking about actually going up to him and, Arr! Biting off his flesh. You know, at the Passover supper, the last supper, why didn't he? He's like, okay, come on, guys. Come on, take a bite. Stupid. 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 Okay, stupid. But, verse 17, we're going to go to verse 34. Okay, this, this is self-explanatory. But see, the ignorance of God's word, the scriptures, and this, this entertainment esque theatric stuff that you get, especially with Rome. Oh, you talk about theatrics, okay? They're taught to believe what they see. Faith cometh by hearing, okay? And remember, the Jews require a sign, okay? And Catholics, you know, even though they don't say we are Jews, they teach that they have replaced Israel, okay? Long, long stuff. There's stuff on the channel here about that. But let's read. Verse 17. 
Now in this I declare unto you, I praise you not, that ye come together not for the better, but for the worse. For first of all, when ye come together in the church, I hear that there be divisions among you, and I partly believe it. And right there in verse 18, some will be like, see, it's a built. No, it isn't. No, it isn't. If I can remember, our dear brother Alexander B. Hartley has videos, which I will I'll put in the description box if I forget. He will put them in the comment section, okay, uh, about church and churches, okay? It's not a building. For there must also be also heresies among you. <laughs> yeah. That they which are approved may be made manifest among you. Approved. Approved unto God. So many of these guys are approved of men. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They get their little followings and whatnot. And they're, they're um, you know, guys who are willing to uh, kill, you know, sacrifice themselves and stuff like that. Nonsense. Let's continue. When ye come together... Therefore, in one place, this is not to eat the Lord's Supper. For in eating, everyone taketh before, another, before other his own supper. And one is hungry, and another is drunken. What? Have ye not houses to eat and to drink in? Or despise ye the Christians, the church of God, and shame them that have not? What shall I say to you? Shall I praise you in this? I praise you not. Verse 22 gives you um, gives to you that the Lord's Supper, which was the Passover meal, um, is not just, is not. At this time, obviously, they were actually having a meal. Yes, they were. But that's not the basis of it. You don't go get together just to have the meal. Okay. That, that's, that, I mean, that was part of it. Yes. Yes, but that's not the main context of what is communion, okay? For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he brake it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Okay, Jesus didn't turn the actual piece of bread into his own flesh either. That's, that's heresy. And that's what Catholicism tells you. It's not true. Okay. After the same manner, also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye, as oft as ye drink it, in remembrance of me. Twice. Twice we see in these two verses, in remembrance. Now, the Catholic will not deny about the remembrance thing, but they add into it the part that this is necessary for salvation. And it isn't. It isn't. And they, they, they will go, if you eat my flesh and drink my blood and that kind of stuff, but they ignore where the Lord says, doth this offend you? The, pre the flesh profiteth Nothing! Okay? All right? For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do shew the Lord's death till he come. Shew the Lord's death. Death to that. Death to the world. Death to self. Okay? All right? Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. Unworthily. What does that mean? You're going to have communion with the Lord in remembrance of him and you're in sin? Because what's the argument? Well, no one's worthy. The Jehos say that. that. You're right. No one is worthy. You're right. But that's not what that is talking about. That if you're in sin... And you're, you know, putting on the facade and trying to act like, good, King James Bible believing person. And you go out there and then you're going to go out and have communion while you're living in sin. Uh, 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 no, 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 no. 
Verse 28 is key to what communion is. It's a time of remembrance, remembering what the Lord did for you. Reading Isaiah chapter 53 would be also very helpful for you if you are to have communion, okay? But let a man examine himself. And so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. Ah, examine himself. When, you're, when you do communion, okay, it can be done in the context of a meal. Sure, absolutely. Right here we are reading that it was originally right here in context of a meal, but the meal itself wasn't the focus, but the remembering of the Lord and self-examination. Self-examination examination which so many of us like to get away from don't we don't we need to deal with reality or reality is going to deal with you it's that simple okay let's continue but let a man examine himself and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup for he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. Okay? You're in sin and you're going to have communion. Okay? It's not that not discerning the little cookie that the Catholics tell you. No. No. You're making light of what the Lord has done for you. You're making light of what he is, who he is. When you're going to him and wanting to have communion with him and you're in sin. Okay? For this cause, being unworthily. You know, an example, an example. Okay? You want to have communion with the Lord. Okay? But you're actively watching porn. Okay? You're actively a drunkard. You're actively doing whatever. Okay? And you're going to go, oh, that's dangerous, man. That's dangerous. You got to watch out for that. Okay? You got to watch out for that. That's why self-examination. Okay? Self-examination. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. Mm -hmm. Many sleep. Reference on to death. Yes. But also, you could be wide awake, but yet be sleeping, meaning that, you know, you're deceived. Okay? Verse 31. Verse, 30, verse 28 and 31 are key to understanding what communion actually is. It's a time of remembrance of who the Lord is, what he has done for you as a saint, saved you, taken you out of Egypt, sealed you with himself. Okay? And also, for if we would judge... Oh, boy! Oh, boy! And there's the, and there's the false convert, and there's the cross-dressing Calvinist, and there's the, the, the rest of... A lot of the Christians don't want to do... For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. And then they go to 1 Corinthians chapter 4, where Paul says, I don't even judge myself. Let's go there. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, okay? 1 Corinthians chapter 4. And this, the cross-dressing Calvinist, this is one of his favorite things that he twists. He's lost, okay? Um, 1 Corinthians chapter 4, uh, verses 1 on to verse 5. Let a man so account of us as of the ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. But with me, it is a very small thing that I should be judged of you or of man's judgment. Yea, I judge not myself. But wait a minute. If, for if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. Your judgment is flawed by itself. Okay, even a saint, your judgment is flawed. 
Our standard of judgment is not fleshly, carnal. It's scripture. This, the authorized version, is our standard for our judging us, judging ourselves. Okay? So when Paul says, I judge not my own self, that doesn't mean that there's no internal judgment going on or examination. No. What that means is he's not judging himself by his own standard. That's what that means. Okay? We have, dear saints, dear friends, we have a perfect standard, the authorized version of the scriptures. Okay? We have this. This, the scripture, is what we judge ourselves upon. We judge ourselves first, and we judge others by this standard. That's what he's talking about. That's what that means. Okay? Watch out for, the, watch out for these Calvinists, man. They're, they're, they're crazy. They're crazy. Let's continue. For I know, and see, verse 4 explains to you, verse 3. Okay? For I know nothing by myself. Paul's like, my, my judgment's flawed because you can always find a loophole somewhere to justify whatever you want. Okay? For I know nothing by myself, yet am I not hereby justified. But he that judgeth me is the Lord. How is the, you know, you read in the book of Revelation, the sword out of his mouth. The people are going to be judged. How are the people going to be judged? By what standard are the people going to be judged at the great white throne? The perfect standard. The authorized version right here, buddy. This, this, the authorized version. The word of God is what they're going to be judged by. What we are going to be judged by. This perfect standard. Okay? So when he says, but he that judgeth me is the Lord. How is the Lord, how does the Lord judge us right now? Yeah, yeah what? The scriptures. It's not yea, hath God said. It's not yea, hath God said. It's the scripture. Okay? It's the scripture. This is how he judges us. This is how he judges us. And you got to watch out for these people who twist this in 1 Corinthians chapter 4. Okay? You got to watch out for that. Okay? Because they'll come to this and like I said, they'll come, oh, yea, hath God said. Yea, hath. No. Paul is talking about, number one, he's not judging his own self. Why? For I know nothing by myself, meaning that his judgment is flawed without the word of God, without the Lord, okay? Yet, am I not hereby justified, who justifies us, the Lord? But he that judgeth me is the Lord. How does he judge you? Through the scripture. Therefore, judge nothing before the time... So don't judge anyone. Keep reading. Until the Lord come. Second coming? Well, then we're in a lot of trouble. Then I guess we just can't judge anybody. And then we can get... No. No. You cannot judge rightly until the Lord come, meaning you're saved. Romans chapter 2 talks about this very well. You read that on your own time. My wife's making dinner. Okay? But, but... But, therefore, judge nothing before the time. What time is that? Until the Lord come, until one is saved. Okay? Because you lost people. What's, what's your standard of judgment? Yourself. And your own judgment is flawed. Paul, a saint, says, for I know nothing by myself. He's saying, hey, I'm a saint. I'm saved. But even so, my judgment is flawed. The Lord judges me. How? Through the scripture. Okay? So, where it says, therefore judge nothing before the time until the Lord come. Until you're saved, you won't be able to judge righteous judgment. Okay? Because when you are saved, the Lord dwells within you, sealed until the day of redemption, and he will guide you. He will guide you onto the scriptures, and he judges you through the scriptures. Why do you think so many of you don't want to read it? Okay? Therefore judge nothing before the time until the Lord come, who both will bring to light... It's, this is obvious. The hidden things of darkness and will make manifest the counsels of the heart and then shall every man have praise of God. Okay? All right? It's not talking about, well, don't judge anything. 
uh, your, your judgment is flawed. God's judgment is perfect. And he has given us a perfect, inerrant, given by inspiration word to where we judge ourselves first and others. Okay? And someone coming around disputing that doesn't want to be judged. Okay? So back to 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 31 again. For if we would judge ourselves, it's not a contradiction. Okay? We should not be judged. But when we are judged, how? Through the scripture, we are chastened of the Lord that we should not be condemned with the world. Communion is, is examination, remembrance of who the Lord is. It's not salvific. Wherefore, my brethren, when ye come together to eat, tarry one for another. And if any man hunger, let him eat at home, that ye come not together unto condemnation, and the rest will I set in order when I come. Communion is a time of remembering who the Lord is, what he has done for us as the saints, and also examining yourself. It's self-examination. It's the beloved of 2 Corinthians 13, okay? 2 Corinthians 13. This is the third time I am coming to you. In the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be established. I told you before and, and therefore tell you I told you before and foretell you, as if I were present the second time and being absent. Now I write to them which heretofore have sinned, and to all other that if I come again, I will not spare. Since ye seek a proof of Christ speaking in me, which to you word is not weak, but is mighty in you. For though he was crucified through weakness, yet he liveth by the power of God. For we also are weak in him but we shall live with him by the power of God toward you. Examine yourselves. Whether ye be in the faith, prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves, how that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobate? That's a good verse too about, you know, the Lord is that spirit. The Holy Ghost, the Lord, our Father, Jesus Christ, dwells within us. Okay? Oh, man. But I trust, that ye shall know that we are not reprobates. Now I pray to God that ye should do no evil, not that we should appear approved, but that ye should do that which is honest, though we be as reprobates. In the eyes of the world, we are reprobates. In the eyes of a lot of Christians, us saints are reprobates, okay? For we can do nothing against the truth, but for the truth. For we are glad when we are weak, and ye are strong. This also we wish even your perfection. That sacrificial charity, okay? Self-sacrifice, okay? Therefore, I write these things being absent, lest being present I should use sharpness, according to the power which the Lord hath given me to edification and not to destruction. And yes, our Lord delighteth in mercy. But if you mess around, he's going to hurt you. Finally, brethren... Farewell. Be perfect here with the Lord, not sinlessly perfect. Be of good comfort. Be of one mind. Live in peace, and the God of love and peace shall be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the Christians salute you. Oh, excuse me. All the saints salute you. Grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Ghost be with you all. Amen. People, today, you know, Ash Wednesday, people are going to be going to the little Catholic Mass, you know, putting the curse on their head and eating the cookie and drinking the wine and sitting there for 15 minutes uh, while they digest their Jesus. Communion is not salvific. Communion is reflection and self-examination. Okay? Watch out for that, these Catholics who tell you you got to eat a cookie and drink wine in order to receive Jesus. They don't have Jesus. 
they are Satan's church. So that's going to be it for this little video. Thank you so much for watching this if you do. Bye-bye.